Hi, everybody. Welcome to Reality Buzz TV, where we talk about all things reality TV shows. I thought, let me sit and do this review before I go to bed, because trust me, I don't have enough time to do all of these reviews. And tomorrow, uh, Real Housewives of Devon is coming out, so I have to do that as well. So welcome, welcome. If you are a fan of a reality TV and you're a fan of, fan of the Mommy Club, come on here, because we are about to have a conversation about what's going on in the Mommy Club. Up, you guys listen you're going to get videos from all over the place on this channel and my other channel because i'm busy with school so when i get a chance whether i'm at a supermarket paying for my groceries whether i'm in the bathroom if i feel like i have time to do the video you're just going to get a video don't be asking me where i am doing this video okay <laughs> Otherwise, we're just not going to get any reviews or any gossip. So, you guys, the first thing was Uhepi and her daughter just said. So, remember the history here is that when season one started, it didn't. Uh, their relationship was very tense. Okay, they, they had a lot of issues with each other. They did not respect each other much, and uh, they were going through therapy last season so this season their relationship is looking much better you guys it looks like they communicate better it looks like they like each other better than they did last season i love the fact that therapy worked uh, for them even happy was saying that she loves where they are in their relationship with Isetso. So I'm loving that, you guys. And it's good to see that in reality TV shows because a lot of the times families will fall apart after they do a reality show. So when you see uh, something like that where the relationship was worse and then it's getting better now because they are on the show and they did therapy on the show. And I do believe that they did therapy just because they were on the show as a storyline, but it actually helped their relationship. So I love that. Isetso wants a car, I guess, you guys, because why because her mom is rich okay <laughs> and when i first saw that they're going to look at cars i was like but happy can use this as uh, a good motivation for this so because people have been saying online that this also doesn't go to school she dropped out people are saying she was suspended from school and some people are saying they don't know why she's not at school but she's definitely not at school there was a time where she was supposed to be going to a metric dance and people are saying this child cannot be going to a metric dance because she's not at school okay so i felt in the beginning you know what happy can just say listen i will get you a car but wait until you finish school and after they had looked at the cars they're looking at fancier cars than i thought you guys but i, I was like okay that's what rich people did uh, do because i thought they were going to look at like a small anyana car for the first time a car of like a teenager okay and after what she does say she's like listen all you have to do is do well at school so then that made me feel like they want us to think she's back at school I'm saying they want us to think because you can never know you guys on these reality shows, especially with her. I think she pays a lot of attention to what social media is saying and she knows people are questioning why her daughter is not at school. So I feel like there are possibilities that she's, she is back at school, but there are also possibilities that she's not back at school. They are just pretending that she's back at school. But I do feel like the car situation can motivate her to go back to school if her picture says, hold on, I'm not getting this car until you get your metric. Then when you get your metric, then I will buy you a car. Another thing that made uh, made me feel like she, uh, she might not be at school is because last week she said that when her boyfriend goes to vice city, she's actually and, and moving to rest she's actually going to move to rest with him and i'm like what's and then what about your life what about you finishing school about you going to the advice of your choice what about you going to rest okay so that made me feel like okay she's just at home this one okay so yes you guys i don't know but they want us to think she is at school and happy said you will get the car if you pass at school i don't know let me know in the comment section if you did believe that situation then it's weird, you guys, because Ratile has apparently called Barbara, her maid, to come back to work, the maid that she fired because the maid had stolen something. And she calls up Barbara, they're having a meeting. She's like, I'm so glad. Now, here's another thing. They don't explain. Ratile doesn't go into it and say, listen, this is what we, we went through, and this is the reason we're bringing her back. It's like we just see them having a meeting, and we're like, what now? <laughs> you know? Apparently, she called to Barbara. She said she needs Barbara 
because the other nanny had only lasted two days, but that information I think we got from the gossip we didn't get from her or Atile. I don't know, you guys, Atile just wants to pretend that everything is perfect, even with everything that we are seeing online as far as her and her husband and her family is concerned, but she just wants to, she's determined to present like a picture of a perfect family. So Barbara is back, but she's like, I don't know if I want to be back here because I was mistreated, but I also think that she needs a job. So she's like, mm, maybe I can come back and work until I get another job, okay? So they're talking about the fact that she's coming back, that today is about to, to fetch the kids from home. Barbara is excited to see the kids, but I feel like she wasn't excited to come back to work, okay? So after they had that talk, she uh, Ratile goes to fetch the kids. Now, you guys, I felt like this was a situation where Barbara, Barbara should not have gone back. I understand she needs a job, but I feel like she had gone, um, you know, like she was actually kind of gossiping about them because she was telling uh, uh, the, the boss's business to the other ladies. Obviously, Ratile doesn't know that Oh, Barbara has been shooting since. She doesn't know that Barbara has actually told the story of how she was fired, how she was unfairly uh, dismissed. And also she doesn't know how we know about the story of Barbara going to CCMA because she hasn't told it, told it herself, but Barbara told it uh, when she was speaking to Uhebi. So I feel like it's she's still going to lose her job again because once Ratile find that out, they go, there's going to be that trust issue between them because how do you go tell uh, my business to people, okay? But if I was Ratile, I wouldn't have brought uh, Barbara back, especially if the story of them accusing her of, th of theft is true because I know that this person is bitter towards me. And am I going to trust that she's still going to treat the kids, you know, right? I don't know, you guys. Sometimes when, you know, the nannies are angry at you, they will mistreat a child. So I felt like it's risky for her to bring Barbara back. But then she doesn't have the full information that Barbara has been going around telling, you know, what's happening with them. So they do that. She fetches the kid. The kids are happy to see her, but she was also chatting with, I guess there's a, a maid and a nanny. I'm like, these people, I guess they're rich, rich because they have a nanny, they have a maid. I don't know. They have multiple helpers in the house, but there is a big house because they do show it to you guys from the outside. So um, she's happy to see the kids. I guess you guys, because when they were talking with Ratila, she does say, listen, I'm listening to her and I'm hearing what she's saying, but I don't think that I'm coming back here, you know? And, but then we see her looking like, okay, she's single because she even told the kids that she's back at work. So I guess she's back, you guys. And also it was interesting when she was talking to the other um, nanny, she was saying, listen, if I come back, I'm going to make sure that we sign a contract, okay? I'm going to make sure we sign a contract. She was like, I'm not working weekends. I'm not working holidays. I'm not doing no favors, okay? And I get that with Barbara because I feel like, yeah, if they mistreated you like that after you worked on weekends, worked on holidays and did them favors, but they mistreated you, so why should you do it some more? So I supported her in that, but I just still don't understand why she's back, you guys. Now, uh, the other scene was Miss Manche and Numpumi uh, trying to, not trying, but she was taking Manche to the driving school, okay? Manche, her, her, her nanny. Now, you guys, here's the thing. I feel like uh, Mrs. Mobs would do anything to avoid uh, things that have to do with her. I don't know how to explain it, you guys, because, of course, that show shows a lot of moms. It shows moms, kids, and the nannies, okay? We don't we hardly ever see the, the husbands, okay? But there's just something I feel about Mrs. Mouse where I feel like uh, she's very good at avoiding things being about her because in this scene, it was all about Mancha. Mancha is learning to drive um, uh, and she's appreciative of that and because Mrs. Mouse wants to give her opportunities and all of that. But I did feel like a lot of the time she's like, you know, anything but me, you know, let's go everywhere, but not here, <laughs> you know. 
And so I was like, okay, I guess we're going to watch my um, a man she learn to drive, you know. Anyway, you guys. So then we do get Unonora and Uno Zipu. Listen, as much as I like Uno Zipu, I do think you guys it, she was very shady to Ratile by the pool when she was asking that question, or she, when she was saying to her, "You need to ask your husband for favors because you've just forgiven him, and he is likely to give you whatever it is that you want." And I guess everybody else also thought the same because Nunurai was here to uh, sort of talk to her about that, to say, girl, what happened? What happened to you? Uh, saying, making that comment. And Nuno Zippo did admit, listen, after I said the comment, I thought it was shady to say it. I do feel like actually that we can credit that comment to producers. You know why? Because I feel like Nozipo looked uncomfortable even saying it, okay? But I also do understand that they're not going to force you to say it because you can just say, okay, they can say, okay, uh, ask Ratile this, or, you know, you guys need to get to, you know, talk about this issue. And then it's like, yeah, but you get to the scene and you like, you avoid an issue. Uh, I still feel like she has to take accountability and responsibility for it, even though I do feel like somebody must have planted something in her to go uh, that direction when it came to uh, that conversation, you guys. So, uh, I guess she is saying she was wrong for the comment and maybe she will apologize to Ratile. And because Nuno Rai is like, listen, for you guys, it might be entertainment. Yes, Futsi, the irony in this whole thing, because Nuno Rai is saying, you know what, it might be entertainment to you what's going on with Ratile, but for Ratile, it is real life. That thing is really happening to her. She really had to forgive her husband. The side chick was really online posting about her husband. It wasn't an act. It wasn't for entertainment. So for you, it's entertainment, but for her, it's real life. And I was like, and did she not know what it was going to happen to her because something similar happened to her, you guys, with her husband taking another wife. And then people are out here trying to tell us that this woman only found out on social media that her husband was taking the second wife. And I'm like, mm -mm -mm. I never, you know, I really don't believe that, you guys. I feel like they, they're just pretending that that's when they find out. I feel like this woman knew that her husband was up to something because a man, uh, when a man says they want to take a second wife, uh, usually it's not a girlfriend that they met last night, okay? It's a girlfriend that they've had for a while. And if you are in your marriage, unless you are absent in your own marriage, you will see that, you know, this man, you know, is up to something, okay? So, uh, yes, you guys, but she she said that she does feel like she needs to uh, apologize. And I like that, you guys. So now this is what um, I didn't understand with Nozibo because at the beginning of the conversation, uh, she's talking about her online store. So uh, Nunura is asking her, so what, what's happening with your store and whatever? And she talks about the store and then she's like, no, let's just go and, and do what we're here for, which is be with the kids, okay? I'm like, how no Zippo? Because I mean, I feel like if my friend is a business uh, woman or has businesses and I'm starting a business, okay? I am demanding free advice from my friend. But even worse, if they are offering, I the minute that they, she says, Guti, what's going on with your online store? You know, do you need any advice? I'm like this with the book. Yeah. What what do I need to do? I feel like she should have taken an opportunity to get advice from Nunurai because Nunurai is, uh, is Nunurai's business seems to be doing well. And she's been saying, Unozipo, that she needs to do something, you know, independent of her husband, of her marriage. Because basically, even though she doesn't want the other women to say, but she doesn't have plan B, you know, her plan A, B, C, D, E, and F is her marriage. Okay. And with everything going on in her marriage, she, she does need to focus on her business. So I did not understand her not taking the opportunity because it looked like Ununurai wanted to give her. Uh, advice okay so i did not understand that you guys so and then we do get um uno zippo not not no zippo uh uratile with uh nunurai and uh what's the other lady mrs sande going to lunch but before we talk about that um that scene let's talk about you happy and shalom okay because that one is at the end. Oh, happy no shalom, shalom, her, her nanny uh, or her kids' nanny slash the maid, because I think she does everything. Okay. So uh, she's telling Oh, happy, because you know what? 
Barbara is back at that place that she was telling us about. And she was telling us how horrible she was treated, but she's back at work. And Happy is like confused, okay? I do feel like Happy was also not happy because I think she was enjoying the fact that they are getting all of this gossip from Barbara about Ratile. So now it's more like, uh, okay, you know? <laughs> she's like, okay, she's back at work. She's like, yeah, she's back at work. So oh, Happy is like, okay, so did she tell Ratile all of the things that she said she has been telling us about her? And Shalom is like, no, but I don't think that's going to be an issue because she didn't lie. Everything that she said about Ratile was true. But then she was called to go back to work. And because she doesn't have a job, she did go back. Okay. So Happy doesn't understand that. But you guys also, uh, they do touch on uh, Happy's condition. Okay. Because Happy does not eat. Okay. She, she said it's achalasia. It's called achalasia. It's a problem with the pipe when you're trying to eat and all of that. You can't keep the foot down. Very traumatic, you guys. That's the reason that she even uh, vomited in this one scene on uh, season one. So she says she will need to go to a doctor because there's a procedure that now and then she needs to do just to, I guess, keep things in control because she feels like she doesn't eat. Shalom, you guys. It's like, I hope that that relationship uh, they are able to keep with Happy because I really feel like Shalom at this point, she's like Happy's little sister, but it's a little sister that works for her because she seems to care for Happy a lot, you guys. And uh, I think... Um, Close to Miss Mancha and um, and Mrs. Mobs, I think Shalom and Happy do have a good working uh, relationship. So she was worried about the fact that Happy doesn't eat, you guys. And I do imagine I was, uh, how that's like, you know. And I, I um, at the beginning when she was trying to explain it, I was like, hey, I can't imagine not being able to eat. I think I would just force the food down. That, that was my thinking. But then I thought... But I know that vomiting is not a pleasant experience, you guys, especially if it happens all the time. So I imagine that if you know that every time you eat, you're going to vomit, then you might you might end up not liking the food. Even if you really love the food, you might end up just not liking the food. And I think that's what's happening with um, Uheb. She's just ending up not uh, wanting to eat. You know, every time she's brought, of course, even that time, I think she ate like a strawberry or something and then she left it there. Okay, so I imagine how hard that is, you guys. She does say that recently she has lost a lot of weight because of her condition. Okay, so you guys, uh, then, yes, you guys, I think Opa I did touch on that. And then Mrs. Mobs and uh had to go and visit her mom and her dad she says she's back from a business trip listen you guys i'm one of those people that also thought oh mrs mobs is just saying she works in her husband's business okay uh runs and a cyber security company and all of that and by the way <laughs> right it does make a comment about mrs mobs and says that you know it's strange that Mrs. Mobs is um, a drama graduate, but she is a COO in her husband's company and also runs a cyber security company. Okay, it sounds like just an article, um, not an article. It sounds like a title that your husband will just give it to you when you're being a good wife. They were like, listen, I'm starting this company here. We're just going to write that you are you know but she was coming back from a business trip and i was like okay maybe you know she does work and she went to see her mom you guys i don't know if i'm the only one that noticed to go to my work and as good she's lost a lot, a lot of weight in fact when uh mrs mobs arrived and i saw her mom i was like maybe they're going to talk about uh her mom not being well because she felt like it she looked like maybe she has been sick and lost a lot of weight she just doesn't look like the last time that we saw them okay but they didn't mention any of that she was just visiting them updating her them on you know the girls that she has met and all of that obviously it was just for her to shoot the scene okay and uh yes you guys i guess it's great to see her with her parents i think she's very lucky that she still has her mom and and, and dad and she's the only child uh too and uh and and then also the parents as they're getting older you guys you realize that they do feel lonely they want you more and more at home you can see how excited they are to see her i think she's like did, is she not the only i think she's the only child or she has it's her and a brother or something like that but there isn't a lot of siblings so they really appreciate her 
when uh, she is there, okay? So uh, we did get that visit. Listen, you guys, I don't know uh, why I keep feeling this thing with Mrs. Mobs where I feel like, it's like, I feel like I want more, but she's giving something, but I still feel like, but, you know, because even a visit, like, I know it's it, like, I know reality TV shows are not reality TV shows because they are shows. They are more shows than they are reality. But it did feel like she just came in, sat down, and then it wasn't even an hour. She was up and she left. And it didn't seem real. It, it, it did seem like she just came to shoot a scene and go. And I guess it does make sense a little bit because she's coming from the airport. And since the airport is closer to where her parents live, she decided to pass by. And it wasn't supposed to be a long visit, maybe. But it did feel weird that Eka just, you know, and, and and go okay she just came to shoot the scene i don't know you guys i don't know i don't know maybe somebody can explain in the comment section why i'm feeling the way are you feeling the same about mrs um, mobs you guys and there was the thing about her last season that people kept saying mrs mobs doesn't give a lot and uh she avoids talking about uh, herself okay and then you guys we do get ratile mrs asande and nunurai it was lunch or uh supper okay they're looking nice, but guys, all oh, right, oh, I was wearing a black dress, nice black dress, and uh, then she was wearing this white singles, nice singles. Why was she wearing a Mapenti horse? Am I missing something, guys? I feel the way you wear, you know, stalking to it. I'm a Lukuzan with Ama singles. I was like, why was Ratila wearing that? She was wearing singles with Ama Ipenti horse. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I don't understand this time, but who am I get to comment on fashion, you know? But I thought it was weird, okay? So they're sitting down to talk. Now, this is a thing that I think Mrs. Sander will, will get uh, caught up in, is that she she can, she can gets now, which there are two groups. There is Happy and uh, Mrs. Mops on the other side, and then there's Ratile and uh, Nunurai on the other side, and it looks like she's choosing the side, Kan Nunurai and Ratile. Okay, but the reason there is two groups um, or there are two groups in on, on the show is because of what they went through last season. So for them, there is a reason why Ratira is hanging out more with Nunurai. She has a reason. She went through some stuff with the girls from the other group. So is Nunurai, so is Mrs. Mops, and so is uh, Happy. They know why they're doing that because they went through some things with the other ladies. Now, I feel like with Mrs. Sunday, she's just ending up spending time with this group without giving the other group a chance. And when she's with this group, she's wanting to talk about the other group. Okay. Now, I feel like she's putting herself in a weird situation because she, even with Ratile and Nunurai, she is still getting to know them. Okay, so what if you find out later on that those are not really your people? The people you could have gotten along with is uh, Mrs. Mobs and Happy, but you did not really give them a fair chance because you already were hearing what uh, Nunurai and Ratile were saying about the other ladies and you were taking that and you were choosing that these are, are going to make better friends than them. Okay, so I do think that she needs to hang out with that group more. And also when she hangs out with that group, there is no reason for her to come back and tell this group everything that she talked about in that group and shade the other group. Every time she talks about Happy, she's shading her on talking about what the wrong thing that Happy is doing. And then now Mrs. Mops made an effort in the uh, at the trip. You remember they went to the trip? They went on a trip and there is a scene where she made an effort to spend time with Mrs. Sand. Okay. That's not... And uh, talk about the reason for that because I, I think she does have a point as to what the reason was for Mrs. Mobs to spend time with her, but nonetheless, she spent time with her. There was a, a, a beginning of them building a friendship. Now, everything, because if Mrs. Mobs wanted whatever they discussed with Mrs. Sandy to be known to the group, she would have discussed it with the group. She would have discussed it in front of everybody, but she didn't. She called Mrs. Sandy aside and be like, let's get to know each other. Let me talk about this one thing that happened to me so you can get to know me. That's when she was talking about the uh, auctioning of the house, them having financial troubles and all of that, how they're now trying to recover. Mrs. Sandy takes that conversation now, tells Nunurai and uh, 
Ratile. You know, sometimes there are, there are things that you want to share with certain people, but not certain people. So I do feel like Umesis Mops might feel betrayed by Mrs. Sunday. Now you're going to end up alienating yourself from the other group when even in this group, you are not sure you're going to be able to build a friendship. I think it's a mistake that uh, Mrs. Sunday is making. I think she should be making equal efforts to get to know both the ladies. I think Kudosipo is also uh, moving towards a group of uh, Mrs. Mobs, but for an example, they did have like a one-on-one -on -one with Anunu Rai. And um, I don't think they've had a one-on-one -on -one with Ratsile, but I think next week they're going to have a sit down with Ratsile. But also on social media, you are seeing Uno Zipono Ratsile spending time together, but you're not seeing Mrs. Sunday. So I don't even think that she was able to uh, build a friendship with uh, the other ladies, you know? And I think that's the reason she chose too soon which group she was going to stick with, okay? Anyway, you guys, um, so, I guess they were talking about Uno Zippo. Ratila was shading Uno Zippo saying, uh, I guess she was talking about the comment that Uno Zippo had made and said, listen, if she wants to laugh at that, she can laugh because she does look miserable. <laughs> listen, you guys, Uno Zippo does look uh, miserable. Okay, she doesn't look very happy. Even the smile is like a smile. It, 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 it looks like a smile before you cry. You know, I think she was going through a lot while she was shooting the show, but she was not wanting to share. And I think she could have used the show as therapy. And maybe the producers uh, would have decided to pay for therapy sessions because I do believe that the therapy that they uh, get while on the show, the show pays for it. OK, so I feel like she could have used that opportunity and be like, I'm going through a lot, you guys. I'm stressed. OK, this man has five girlfriends in KZ and I'm sitting here in Joburg in this big house with all of the kids. That Half of them that are not biologically mine, but this man is busy joining while I'm taking care of his kids. OK, that's something to cry about. But I feel like she is uh, holding back, you guys. I would have used the show. I would have exposed that man before, you know. That's what I'm saying. To, for me, I feel like she knew what was coming. She knew that the public was about to find out, but for some reason, she wasn't brave enough to uh, just come out and say, guys, this is what I'm going through. If the producers knew already that Uno Zippo was about to be in a polygamy uh, marriage, then she knew that she was about to be in a polygamy marriage. So I don't understand why she did not share it because I feel like she could have controlled the narrative better, okay? I hope I'm explaining it because I think someone in the comment section did come and say, Daniel, what do you mean she could have controlled the narrative? I feel like that because I do feel like there were people that already knew about it. I feel like she knew too, but she did not know how to hang it on the show. So she just kept quiet about it. And then when it came out, she just pretended that she's just finding out. That is just how I think about it, okay? So, yes, you guys. And now, here is the thing, because the ladies are thinking that Umesis mobs used Umesis Sande to address the trolls. Okay, remember when the house was about to, all, to be auctioned, all of us were talking about that house. We were talking about how, uh, because it was gossip. Okay, we're talking about the house is about to be auctioned. Is she really rich? Because she's been talking, she's been looking down at everybody because she's the richest housewife. Is that even true? If your house is about to be auctioned, what's going on? It was a gossip story. Okay, and we gossiped about it. So now I guess she's coming back to just try and control now the narrative to be like, yeah, we broke, but not really because we still have our house and I still take business trips and all of that and that, 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 that. You know, so you guys, uh, so now they are saying Mrs. Sande and Ratile. Ratile, uh, no, no, right, did make it sound like it came from Mrs. Sande, but it could be the edits that made me feel like it came from Ratile. Ratile asked Mrs. Sande because Mrs. Sande was telling them, Mrs. Mops was sharing this thing with me, how she went through a lot last season. Now, uh, Ratile is like, is she. Uh, sharing that with you because she's getting to know you or she is sharing because she's trying to address the trolls. I guess we're the trolls, honey. <laughs> I guess we are the trolls. Is she trying to control the trolls? Okay. Or is she really getting to know you? And uh, Mrs. Sandy is like, I think she's trying to control 
She's trying to answer to the trolls, not control the trolls. She's trying to answer the trolls because, of course, we gossip. She's like, no, that is not the real story. Here is the story. Okay, but this, the hair story is very similar to the story we were telling. But since we are gossipers, you know, it's always assumed we're not telling the truth. Okay. So I do feel like, yeah, it's a possibility that she just feel like, you know what, I'm safer talking to Mrs. Sunday than the others. Okay. But I still feel like with Mrs. Sunday, she could have just used that as an opportunity to show Mrs. Mops that she is a trustworthy friend. She is a trustworthy person that can become friends with Mrs. Mops. When Mrs. Mops find out that Mrs. Sunday went back to the other girls and, to uh, and told them everything and that she was agreeing that she was addressing the trolls, the relationship between Mrs. Sunday and Mrs. Mops is over. I don't think that Mrs. Mops will make any more effort after that. Okay, that's why I'm saying Mrs. Sunday is putting herself in a bad position. Give every girl a chance to get to know them. You don't know who you're going to click with because she doesn't know, or even Nono Ryan, Rachel, she doesn't know them. So you don't know who you're going to click with. Give everybody a chance so that you have a better chance of coming back next season. Because the less friends you have, they might think, okay, who are you going to shoot with? Because the others are not interested really on uh, sitting down with you. I still feel like, you guys, if Mrs. Sunday is a one-hit wonder on uh, the Mummy Club, I just, I wouldn't mind, okay? I would even vote for uh, Miss Mancha to come back than for us to get Mrs. Sunday because I'm like, what has this woman given us the whole season? She got sick on the, on the trip, had to go home. And I don't know, you guys, I don't know. I'm just not liking her for uh, the show, okay? Anyway, that was the episode uh, for today. I do feel like, you guys, that these women, I don't know if really they, they like, there's no way that I'm going to shade somebody about something that I am currently going through, you know? So sometimes, because Ratina throws a, lo a lot of sh shade on Mrs. Uh, Mobs and I guess her financial situation and her marriage, businesses and stuff. And I feel like you're going through a lot too in your marriage. Why would you shed somebody else about that? It's the same thing even with no zip. So I'm not understanding that about women. It's even worse when you are currently going through the situation, but you're shading the other person about the similar situation. I don't know if it's a thing of them wanting to direct us to, you know, to draw it, to, to push attention towards the other person instead of themselves. I don't know if it's that situation, but I do feel like it doesn't make sense to me. You're going through marriage problems while you're shading the other woman's uh, pro, um, marriage, okay? And also this thing of saying, because Mrs. Sunday said this last uh, episode where she was like, we're happy over here. Maybe marriage was a scam to her saying to happy. You know, happy was saying marriage is a scam. Guys, marriage is a scam. You know, if you get in, uh, uh, into your marriage and you don't know that, know it right now. Marriage is a scam, okay? <laughs> Know it right now. Write it down in a piece of paper. Paste it on your desk so you know. We're not saying get, not don't go in. Go in, but marriage is a scam, you guys. Isn't it not a scam for no zipper? You know, when she thought she was in this, guys, go watch her videos here on YouTube. She thought she was in this happy marriage. And I'm like, ah, why is she happy alone here? Because she was looking like she was so happy. But, you know, not so long after that, a man is in case and paying the wallet for someone else. So when Happy said that good marriage is a scam, she was like, uh, Mrs. Sunday, maybe it's a scam for her. Uh, but I mean, uh, maybe, maybe maybe marriage is a scam for her. Tina, we are happy over here. And I'm like, girl, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that because Tina, we are going to remind you and we'll be even taking the clips from Showmax and showing it here and saying, remember when she said this about, you know, marriage not being a scam, look at how much it is a scam, okay? Anyway, you guys, tell me what you think about this episode in uh, the comments section. I don't know, you guys. I feel like the Mummy Club is watchable. I think at this point I watch it because now I just like most of these women and I want to see how it goes. And also I... I interested in the stories that are happening outside of the show, which is also another thing about these reality shows that are supposed to be reality shows, but the real reality is outside of the show, which really shows us that the show is really just a show. It's not a reality because a person might be going through a divorce and we don't even find out on the show. We find out afterwards, 
you know so since i'm interested in that i'm still watching the show so i you know but there isn't anything that is like you know i'm look i'm looking for you know so next season maybe they need to mix it up a little bit okay just get rid of mrs sunday and see who else you can have around because i don't feel like mrs sunday adds a lot she just looks cute the 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 weaves are laid okay and she's always looking beautiful but mm -mm, content <laughs> anyway you guys thank you so much uh for watching this video let's meet in the comment section and talk about what's happening on uh, the show of course when you see me ne next you're going to be seeing me doing the uh, review of real housewives of uh deb and you guys but in between we do other videos as well check out this uh channel reality bars tv but also i am on the nomenclature with the, the gossip thank you so much please like the video before Pumayona. share it with your friends with your family and even with strangers in a tanda kakuru